Rich Corner. You guys ask for Rich Piana all the time, and I actually have him here in person. So we got him back. We're getting some information out of him. And today's subject, we're going to talk about what? Um, I want to touch on uh, growth hormone, okay. insulin, and IGF-1. And okay. the reason being is I'm getting hit up all the time on Facebook. People ask me questions and wanting to know, you know, a million things. And obviously, we sit here and talk for four hours about it. So yeah. uh, I figure we maybe do a three-part series, and people can maybe shoot in questions okay. that they might want to have answered. All right, so basically this is the first of three parts. So if you don't hear it all in this part, you'll hear it in the second and third. But when you view the videos, if you put your comments down, we'll read them and ask the questions that you want, and then we'll write them down and answer them on part two and part, part three. Is that okay? Sounds perfect. Okay, now I, I always wondered about GH and IGF. Aren't they kind of both the same or not? Um, you know, they are basically. I mean, growth hormone is is something you take to raise your IGF levels okay. and IGF-1 is just something, you know, just a synthetic IGF-1 you're injecting in. So you're kind of, uh, you know, going straight to the source. Which is better, IGF-1? Yeah, the, the problem is, is that all the IGF-1 out, in my opinion, is fake. And, uh, you know, I taken real IGF-1 once, which was about nine years ago. Yeah. And it was amazing. Really? I mean, it was truly amazing. And I've tried probably nine different peptide com companies, you know, to see if I could find that exact thing and nothing yeah. even similar. Yeah, they're all over the internet. Yeah, and you know, they're, they're you know, they're, you know, 49, 59, exactly. 29, 39 bucks for, you know, 100,000 micrograms. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not that cheap. No, it's not that cheap, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's... I, I bought some peptides, some sort, and I just, it's supposed to help you heal quick and help your skin. Yeah. I think it actually did just a little bit but I didn't know anything amazing out of it. And then, then I didn't really take enough, and then it added up to be a whole lot of money. Yeah. Like $300 a week or something like that. So now that's my budget for lunch. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> have different theories on, you know, how to take it, how it works, you know, the best time right. to take it. And for me, you know, back in that day, I tried taking it right before I worked out, mm -hmm. and I injected intermuscular. And the pump I got was just unbelievable. I mean, my arms would pump up at least an inch and a half to two inches bigger than normal. Really? And the burn was just, like just brought wow. tears to my eyes like I would I just couldn't even do any more reps well when you when you inject um, uh, growth hormone or IGF there's somebody said or I've read in the past you're supposed to inject it into the fat and somebody's going the muscle yeah yeah the old the old school way was into the fat and yeah. the reason being is because it lasts longer in the fat cells you know okay. and in the muscle it's used up a lot quicker but then they did more research later recently you know within the last couple of years and they found that it's 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 almost identical you know it's it's still lasts a little longer in the fat but not much so it doesn't really matter yeah it doesn't matter and you know a lot of people like my belief is you know it it works in the area where you inject it you know they've done studies and you actually lose body fat in the area where you inject it so the big thing was injecting your stomach right but if you think about it growth hormone you know it, it burns fat and it builds muscle so if okay. it's going to work in the same area you inject it why wouldn't it build build the area also like so stomach. So, you know, the years of injecting in the stomach, I think, had a lot to do with, you know, to send the stomachs. Really? So if you inject it in your bicep, you're going to get more out of it? I believe that it's possible. You know, I, I'm i not saying 100% for sure. Okay. Um, that's my theory. Um, I've injected it in certain areas over and over again, and I noticed that I feel that it, you know, did make a difference. Okay. Now, what about quantity? What about units and how many a day? Well, you and I had this conversation, and I said I had taken two in the morning and two at night. I didn't notice anything great out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you said, well, go up to five and then five, which is one whole bottle. Uh -huh. And that's a bottle a day. Yeah, of the Chinese, correct? And that, Yeah, and that adds yeah. up. Yeah. Um, the Chinese potency isn't you know as strong. I don't feel as as much as, you know, Cero Stim you right. know, or uh, uh, Gentropin or something like that, the American companies. Okay. Um, but most of it does work. Some of it is completely fake. You know, it's kind of hit and miss, kind of yeah. taking a chance with it. Um, but... Uh, you know, a lot of people can't afford, you know, the American stuff, so they stick to the Chinese. Serastem is like one cc per bottle, or is it 18 IUs per bottle? It's 18 IUs per bottle. Okay. Um, and there's seven bottles, you know, and it comes in four, five, and six milligram, but usually you pretty much see it in six milligram everywhere. Okay, and so if it's a 10 pack, it's Chinese? Yeah, yeah, the 10 packs are all from Chinese. Okay, that's what I want. But they still have blue caps? Uh, they all come in different caps. They have, you know, yellow, blue, gray. Uh, gray yeah, and not that it really matters, but some people say, oh, did you get the blue caps? It's like, <laughs> what does it matter what cap color you get as long as you get. Now, if you're going to wear yellow or what was the color today? Blue? Uh, so we're doing yellow. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter if you wear yellow or blue. It's just you're the same potency, really. Yeah, I mean, you regardless. Know, if you want red caps, then I'll just pull these greens off and I'll buy some reds at the veterinary store right. for 10 cents a piece, pop them on your bottle and give it to you and you'll be happy. Okay, I have another question because they're going to ask this too. When you mix the GH or the IGF, you mix it with bacteriostatic water. Um, that's the thing is there's, you know, there's different theories on that also. Back in the day, I used bacterial static water when right. I tried it and it worked incredible. They say that it doesn't last quite as long, but it, you know, 
a bottle depends on how much you're taking, how long the bottle is going to last. That's my point. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, the the IGF one is basically the way to tell if it's real or fake. In my opinion, is all you have to do is take it right before you work out, mm-hmm. and if your pump is like unbelievable, like ten times more than what your normal pump is, then it's real. Okay. And I, all the stuff I've tried, I get no pump at all. It, it's nothing. Okay. You know, and so I went up to trying to take you know four hundred. Um, you know, micrograms in each muscle, you know, so if I'm doing triceps, I put 400 in this one, 400 in this one, which is almost a whole bottle, mm-hmm. and I still got nothing. So that was pretty much, yeah, okay, this is definitely not. not I'm thinking, working. I'm thinking of it while you're talking, because I took two IUs this morning. I was down to my last bottle. I took two IUs, and I went to the gym probably about uh, within an hour, and I did shoulders. Mm-hmm. And my delts, front to back, side to side, I mean, they just pumped, amazingly mm-hmm. pumped, mm-hmm. where I'm, I couldn't hardly move my arms. I never really had that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe now you're talking maybe that was it maybe yeah that's why yeah the burn is just unbelievable yeah. unbelievable and the muscles grew you know I, I took the real I took the real stuff for about six months straight mm-hmm. and um, it, it was amazing the results I got in six months you know my arms I put it honestly about an inch and a half of my arms back then and that's I mean that's unheard of I don't care what anyone says you know you, you don't put an inch on your arms I mean yeah. you, you can you know put some take some anadrol and d-ball and you know add 30 pounds of bloat and yeah your arms will go up but you know, that's that's not real muscle tissue. Um, no, I know that. I know it's, it's too. It goes on too quick. Comes off quick usually. Um, the insulin. Mm-hmm. Now there's a lot of stories about that, good or bad. You, you're really playing with your your pancreas and all a, a lot of certain things that can give you insulin shock and really kind of screw it up if you don't take it properly. Yes. So what's the deal with that? Um, insulin is being way overused today in my opinion mm-hmm. people are taking it all day long you know all three different kinds are taking it you know all day all night you know they're just on it all the time and the thing is is insulin works it definitely works and it definitely does what it's supposed to do and it is dangerous and uh, as long as you know what you're doing you know everything can be fine i don't know I'm trying to think of his name there was a guy that i know you know he used to work out with aquila you remember aquila sure okay there was big black guy like 330 all upper body that worked out with aquila I can't remember his name. I don't remember him. But uh, yeah, he he tried insulin once, and he's in a wheelchair now, and he can't feed himself. Really? Yeah, because he didn't know anything about it. He took the shot. He felt tired. He laid down to take a nap. Ten hours later, they found him in the room, and he had been seizure after seizure after seizure. Oh my god. Yeah, and that's just from making one small mistake. You know, I mean, it's it's very dangerous. It's, you have to know what you're doing, and if you know what you're doing, you know, it's not dangerous as long as you're taking in the sugar, you know, necessary to match up the insulin you're taking. You know, it's not going to be dangerous. Um, I know I've heard this several several times. This is a little bit off the topic of what I'm talking about. But after you train, uh, after I train, I always take a protein drink, mm-hmm. and then I use this wax maze, which is a complex carb sugar mm-hmm. that supposedly raises your insulin level and mm-hmm. shoots back into your muscles. Is that true? Yeah, it does. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be anything like the real thing. No, but it does. I mean, that's one of my things. Is after I work out, I always take in sugar. Yeah, you know, to replenish the glycogen in the muscle, and that's right. a big thing. And whether you're taking insulin or not. It still does the same thing, but it's just not going to be, you know, as much so. So, somebody had mentioned to me they eat gummy bears, but that makes sense. It's yeah. sugar. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 sugar's the most important thing right after the workout, in my opinion, because you're replenishing the glycogen, feeding the muscle. Right. Now the IGF, H or uh, GH, you can find. IGF seems to be hard to find. It's on the internet, like you say, it's not real. Yeah. Where I do mean, you find something like that? I mean, it's the same means that we find everything else we find. Yeah, I mean, there is. I believe there's about two companies I'm told that actually sell real IGF-1, but it's between 800 and 1200 a bottle. Mm-hmm. So you got between eight and 1200, and you got these other companies selling it for 39 bucks. Yeah. So well, I mean, go. if you logically think about it, you know, there's got to be a reason why. Yeah. And also, you have got to send them paperwork and prove that you are, you know, deficient. Yeah. Well, that you're no, that you're um, involved in uh, laboratory studies or okay. this that. I mean, okay. not even. A doctor can actually order from these sites. Right. So basically, you guys out there can't get it. Yeah, it's not going to get the real thing unless you can forge the papers. And, and, and then, whatever. and then to take it and then or spend twelve hundred dollars and you don't retain it anyway. It's only good for a short period of time, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you could gain permanent muscle from the real GF one. You know, yeah. if you do take it, I think I think it's an you know it is an incredible drug and it is much better than growth if you get the real thing. Yeah. And the problem is, is it's a gamble. Yeah, I mean, people are taking it, and you know. Psychologically, they might think they're getting something in the first couple of weeks, you know, but then after six months, they look and they're like, well, wait a minute, I haven't really got much after six months. No, okay. When you're taking the IGF or you're taking the growth, isn't it best to take it with testosterone? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, it definitely... It doesn't work by itself. 
It does, but I mean, it just works so much better with you know the testosterone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a waste to take it without. Yeah. Anything else like Decker or anything like that? Um, I mean, mainly, yeah. It, I mean, it, they all work together, you okay. know, for the same purpose. But test is the main, you know, that's like the main, the main thing. Whenever I have a cycle, test is the base of the cycle. And more isn't always better. No, definitely not. I mean, like I always say, I like to start off low and then slowly build up, you know, and get as much as I can with the smaller dose as possible. Okay. Okay, so we we covered those three subjects. We're going to do part two and part three. But just in closing, I've had people ask me, I see a lot on, on YouTube, want to know what to do for cycle therapy when you go off. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you take when you go off? We talked about HCG before, mm -hmm. but you have to take a lot of it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you can take when you're off to bring yourself back a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Clomid, you know, there's, there is other things, but um, a lot of people have a rebound effect where they get a lot of estrogen, they have a lot of reten water retention, yeah. you know, and so they'll take Novodex or Rimidex. Um, for me, my own personal experience, HCG is the only thing that really, you know, helps me a lot. I mean, I pretty much, I don't have any kind of a downslope whatsoever okay. um, on the HCG. And, um, you know, from my experience, taking it a lot makes a huge difference. Taking the recommended dosage does nothing for me. And people will say HCG doesn't really do much, and those are the people that haven't tried taking a larger dose. And, you know, I got some comments from our last, you know, uh, we talked about it, and, you know, it was the same thing. You know, people reading the Internet, and then they're contradicting what I'm saying because Always. they're going by what they read. And the thing is, is, you know, I have sat and, you know, sat and done everything every which way possible. Like I told you, that, you know, with yeah, the sure. growth hormone, I would sit down and I would figure out the half-life of the growth hormone. And so, you know, if I took it at this time, you know, was it, what is it at this time? So I need to yep. take a shot at this time and I'd break it down in my body 24 hours a day. We had to talk to the Had the same amount yeah. of growth hormone flowing through my body 24 hours a day. And, um, you know, it's, there was a time when, you know, I would take a shot of growth every two hours. You yeah, know, and this is 15 years ago. You know, yeah. I was, I'm talking. I was way ahead. You know, of what people are even doing now. You know, 15 years ago, I tell. You know, I talk to people now, and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, every two hours." And you know, I carry ice just around, and you know, that's that was. You know, I got the best results. I was mimicking the body's. You know, the way it naturally produces the growth hormone. And you got good results. I got great results. You know, and another important thing that we talked about too in the gym is that taking the growth hormone always on empty stomach. Mm -hmm. You know, is the best time to take it. No carbs, no sugar in your system. Um, you know, in my opinion, in the old days, everyone said, take it right before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. But right before you go to bed, you know, your biggest spurt of natural growth hormone release is during your REM sleep. So when you're sleeping during your REM sleep, which is averages about 90 minutes a night for a person, that's when you have the biggest spurt of natural growth. So if you take it at night, right before you go to bed, you're going to interrupt that natural spurt right, you're getting right, for free. Right. So I would say, free is good. don't take it at night before you go to bed. Let your body produce its natural. And then in the morning when you wake up, you know, then go ahead and, you know, take your synthetic. Okay, then that's another question. When you take it on an empty stomach, how soon after can you eat? Um, an hour, I would say, is the soonest. I mean, for the best results, I would say wait about an hour. So get up early, do it, go back to bed, then eat. Yeah, exactly. You and know. then the other time of the day, I mean, if we're eating six times a day, there's not many hours there that we don't have an empty stomach. Yeah, that's the problem. You yeah, know, so it is a yeah, problem. I mean, um, some people take naps. Yeah. And so I'd say the best times is in the morning when you wake up. Um, also getting up maybe an hour or two before you normally get up and taking it. Yeah. Um, after a nap in the afternoon. Um, yeah. Another time is after the workout. Okay. Um, you know, those are the best times. Now, after a workout, uh, in my in my case, after I work out, I take a protein drink. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to take in uh, the, the GH at that time, I'm, I'm having something in my stomach, so it's not the time to do it. No, no, not the time. It's, it's you know, it's a difficult thing, and you got to weigh out, you know, what's more important and what do you think is the better way. Right. And um, another thing is, the way growth hormone works is, I've noticed that a lot of people claim they don't get that many results, and some people get amazing results. Yeah. And what it is is, it all depends on how much your body naturally produces growth hormone. Of course. So if you're a person that naturally produces a lot of growth hormone, when you add the synthetic, you're not going to get much from it because your body's used to getting a lot of growth hormone. Right, right. Now, if you're someone who doesn't produce a lot of growth hormone and you put synthetic in, you're going to get incredible results because your body's not used to getting that. Okay. You know, same with creatine. We talked about all this yeah, a couple yeah. days ago, just yeah, yeah. us talking, not even... That's right. In the and, yeah, I mean, in the creatine, you know, uh, someone who eats a lot of red meat yeah. is not going to get that much good results from the creatine because they're used to getting creatine all the time. Right. Now, a vegetarian that never eats red meat takes creatine, they, they're going to gain, you know, 10, 12, 15 pounds. Sure. Because they've never had creatine sure. in their diet. Sure. So that's another thing that, you know, people have to understand that, you know, it works dif differently for everybody. Experimentation. All right. For me, it doesn't work that good because I have a lot of natural growth hormone, okay. I, I, is my assumption, you know, okay. because I don't really get that much from growth hormone. And 
I no longer take it. I take it recently because of my knee. Yeah. You know, uh, after surgery, I took it for about three weeks. Helped to heal. Yeah, and uh, you know, and normally I don't, I don't take it because it doesn't really do much for me. What about body fat reduction? Does it help you there? It doesn't. You know, it's amazing. But yeah. I know people that say they can eat McDonald's, you know, all day long, and they just keep getting leaner. It doesn't do that. For me <laughs> like, at all. it doesn't do. You know, it doesn't help my body fat at all. I felt like I actually smoothed out and held water on it. No, that's the thing is I get big. I mean, I get big and puffy. Um, I took one time I tried uh, genotropin from Pfizer Labs, and in one week I put on 18 pounds of water. in one week of water, Absolutely. and my face just went boom, instantly. Mm. And I looked in the mirror and I'm like, okay, I'm like spending a lot of money to look like this. <laughs> yeah, <it doesn't laughs> this is sense. awful. I look terrible. All right, so this is part one. Part one. Okay, so you guys stay tuned, send in your questions, and then we'll do part two, and we'll answer all those questions that we didn't answer on part one. And then when we do part three, we'll answer all the questions that we didn't do on part two. But we will answer them. So, and uh, as far as comments and that, you know, stick to the topic. We don't care what color shoes he had on today because sometimes you'll spot something in the background and say, oh, there's a bird, and it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I see this on comments. Like, Why in the world would you even say this? So, uh, thank you for watching Rick's Corner. Rich will be back. We're going to do another subject soon, and uh, stay tuned for more. Don't forget to buy your original Gold Gym t-shirt with my signature and the World Gym Gorilla with my signature at bodybuilding.com. Buy it now before they run out. It's rickdrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.